watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own road show. Is it Friday already? You What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Friday Night Sucks. Something needs to change with that, I think. I gotta stop doing the bit because it really doesn't suck. It's really awesome. And last week was just a shining example of that awesomeness. It was so good. That's probably my favorite episode to the day. And today, I'm hoping it's gonna follow up nicely. Today, we got a couple of new shows. We are starting off with Three South. Now, I know that it was on MTV. It was an MTV animation, but I think I only remember the commercials for it. Like, I don't remember the actual show. So, we got Three South starting out today. And then, right after that, we have Liquid Television. Everybody knows about Liquid Television, and we've had them here before. Uh, them, it, uh, we, it's been here before. But, after that, we're gonna continue on in Living Color, just like we're continuing on Liquid TV. And, to close it all out, we have what someone actually requested, the Canadian and show kids in the hall. We've had a few stars come out of that, and they're still working to this day. And it was a pretty good show. I know I enjoyed it. So we have the sketch comedy. We have the MTV animation. We're gonna keep it rolling and make sure that you guys, as usual, go get yourself a nice liquid beverage of your choice. And I shall see you again. You know, Ethel, Bartersville's got just the peace and quiet George and I were looking for. And the students are so well behaved. It's August. The students aren't here yet. Welcome, students. Well, that's nice. Take a look around, Mr. Buckles. This is our new home. Wake up, Mr. Buckles. We're here. Didn't you poke holes in the lid so Mr. Buckles could breathe? Quiet. You're scaring Mr. Buckles. Have you given any thought to what you want to do with your life, son? Duh, you've heard my rhymes. I'm gonna be a rapper. It's my only ticket out of the suburbs. Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> Piach! Show business is a tough business, you know. For every superstar who hits it big, like Billy Ocean, there's probably dozens who don't make it. You better not flunk out. I already rented your room to a boarder. I'll call you Pants Boy. How come Cindy didn't come with us? Your sister's a junior now. 
I guess it's just not cool to show up with your parents. Cindy, oh my god, you look so great. How was your summer? It was wonderful. I quit drinking, and it changed, like, my whole self-image. What I discovered is self-respect. That's awesome. Let's drink to being back at school. Oh. Here's a computer to help you grind the academic competition into a bloody pulp. I bought you some of those rainbow pencils with the fuzzy tabs, just like you like. Well, I don't know about this. What if I'm not smart enough to be here? Uh... Yeah. Is that our room? <laughs> I bet you can see the whole parking lot from up there. Hey, did you remember to pack an ass fur? What's an ass fur? Pooing! <laughs> Stanford! And with this handsome globe we bought you, you won't be able to help but get straight A's. I'm gonna try real hard. Hey, there really is a country called Poland. Oh, that's fun. A globe? That's just gonna clutter up the place. We can put it in that corner. That's where I was gonna put this pylon I found. Boys? Shouldn't you wait for your other roommate before you make these decisions? Uh, Sanford and Dell? Your third roommate, Cal? The one you talked to over the summer? He died last week in a freak accident! Woohoo! We talked to a dead guy! Honey, it's not like we're never gonna see him again. I know, but it's the next best thing. For real value in a good car or a good truck, friends, let me show you some gold seal cars and trucks. Now, these are unusual cars and trucks. These are gold seal cars and trucks. These cars and trucks are loaded with equipment, most of them including air conditioning. They have brand new tires. They have brand new batteries. They've been completely safety tested, and they carry a money back guarantee. And we can put you in one of these fine cars for about half, for about half of what a new car would cost. Look. Here is a 1988 Chevy Camaro, $69.95. An 89 Mitsubishi Mirage, $59.95. An 89 Ford Mustang, $69.95. An 89 Chevy Cavalier, $59.95. An 88 Chevy Pickup, a 4x4, $79.95. An 88 Suzuki Convertible, $49.95. An 87 Ford Ranger Pickup with a canopy, $59.95. And an 89 Mitsubishi Pickup, $59.95. Gold Seal Cars, money back guarantee. Worthington Mitsubishi, Worthington Chevrolet on Florin Road. Open till midnight every day. For some people, doing their tax forms by themselves can make them feel like they're climbing the walls. My name is, my full name is, I remember that, dependent. If you need help, Free tax help is available from IRS trained volunteers. Find them by calling 1-800-TAX-1040. They'll make your taxes less taxing. This place is style. No doubt. Dude, we're in like college or something. Uh, I could like throw mayonnaise all over the place if I wanted to. I could wear this sombrero everywhere if I wanted. I could eat this light bulb! I could launch this bag of trash out the window. Dude, that's my stuff! What the hell? Jackasses. For the first time, there's no one around to ruin our fun. Hey, we didn't order that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we didn't order that, um, box. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm supposed to live here. Those incompetents screwed up my room assignment. I was supposed to get a single. I'm Joe. What's that? Ah! It's our dead roommate, Cal! And he knows what we did last summer! That's my exact replica of the human skeleton. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm going to medical school. Orthopedic surgeons start at about 400 grand. That's it? You should be an ass doctor. They make a lot of money because they got to touch people's asses. Oh, God. Welcome, and congratulations on your admission to Barter College. I trust you are all ready to meet the high academic standards of such a fine Ivy League institution. This isn't an Ivy League school. Yes, it is. It's an Ivy League school without all the bull crap. So what if they don't want me to be in their stupid club? Can we be any more immature? I don't need that kind of validation. I drive a Lincoln town car. You know what the best thing about college is? Finally getting away from that crazy girl who stalked me all through high school. Hi, Del. <laughs> Felicity? No, I didn't feel right the way we left things in high school. So I followed you to college. Now I go to barter too. Um, you're not supposed to be in the boys' bathroom. Or within a hundred yards of me. Oh, okay. Well, I'll see you around then. Why did I follow him to college? It was stupid. Stupid, Felicity! Maybe I'll learn if I pull out some of your beautiful hair. Do you mind? I'm trying to read. Me too. I can't concentrate without noise. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Enjoy your time in college, because it's not gonna last. Dude, do you wonder if we're gonna, like, make it here? The way I look at it, as long as they let you be a student here, I've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to look at it. so nervous about. I'm gonna do just fine here. <laughs> you didn't expect to see us up at the crack of dawn getting ready for the first day of classes, did you? For your information, the semester started three weeks ago. Joe was right. We got dropped from all our classes. No, we didn't. We still got this one. And we're right on time. Oh, man. It's over. Hey, look. There's that guy from my room. Let me ask you a question. Two hours ago when I said I was leaving for biology class, where did you think I was going? Oh, uh, well, that was the first choice again. Don't listen to him. Just follow my lead. Nice speech today, Mr. Professor. Really hilarious stuff. My name is Sanford Riley. My friend, Del Swanson, and I are both deaf. We were concerned that perhaps you called our names for attendance these past several weeks, but didn't hear you because we are deaf. I dropped you both last week. What? I'm sorry. I can't hear you because we are deaf. But, Mr. Professor, if you drop us, we'll flunk out. <laughs> You've got to give us another chance. What? It's not our fault. We couldn't find the classroom. And then I dropped my fork. And Joe yelled at me. And then I realized I'm never going to see the back of my head. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll allow you to take Friday's exam. 
but you fail, and you two were on the next bus back to Palookaville. Actually, we're from Canton. I thought you were deaf. Who said that? I've got a problem. You have to get me out of that room. Room 305? No, the bathroom. Oh dear, did somebody BM in the urinal again? This is perhaps the part of the job I enjoy least. Listen, you little albino freak. I don't belong here. Barter was my safety school. How was I supposed to know Harvard had enough white males? Well, we can fill out the roommate transfer form. With all the proper signatures, it should only take about 12 weeks. 12 weeks? The semester will be over by then. Hmm. Want a Thin Mint? I bought a whole box, but it turns out they're too thick for my esophagus. It makes each one a little death cookie. Oh man, how are we gonna pass this biology test? We've never been to the class, we don't even have the book, and neither of us has seen the movie. Maybe we can ask Joe for help. He's smart, and unless I've horribly misjudged him, he's our best friend. Alright, ask him. You ask him. No, you ask him. You ask him. I'm not gonna help you. Help me? Or him? Him, right? You two flunking out is the best thing that could happen to me. I'd get this room to myself. Really? I think the best thing that could happen to you is getting laser surgery. Because you've got such pretty eyes. Now we're going to flunk out and my mom's going to be disappointed in me. This is just like high school. Well, except I didn't flunk out. And I didn't have any pubes. Well, and there wasn't a guy across the hall mowing his carpet. How could they let a guy like that stay in college and not us? Oh, dang this dang thing! Are you in that biology class? Yeah, that test is going to be a bitch though, ain't it? Well, I'll see you fellas around. He must be some sort of rocket surgeon. Or one of those idiot guys that can count real good. <laughs> like everybody loves Rain Man. I think we just found our new best friend. And that's how my mom died. Classic. Hey, after dinner, what do you say we go over the review sheet? Okay, how about number five? Explain the different functions of xylem and phloem. I have no idea. This stuff is way over my head. <laughs> then how'd you get an A on that quiz? He just gave me that because I was on a baseball team. I don't know any of this malarkey. You mean we just wasted a whole week hanging out with you? It wasn't a total waste. We still got these macrame doilies. I have some of this. My dad always told me, if you drink enough, the taste will go away. And a man's touch will be as tender as a woman's. <laughs> What turns women on? It's the most incredible feeling. What turns women on? For men only. What turns women on will turn you on. Call 1-900-660-6666. One dollar per minute, five dollars for the first minute. What turns women on? Now you can try America's most popular $15 love line with the first minute free. Meet someone special free on the love line. Dial 1-900-463-FREE. It's the sweetheart line where lovers meet. Try it free. Dial 1-900-463-FREE. America's love line. You've seen it in newspapers, magazines, on TV. Now catch the excitement. Try it free. Dial 1-900-463-FREE. That's 1-900-463-3733. Now you can try America's most popular $15 love line with the first minute free. Adults only. If you've always wanted to be a sports announcer, now's your chance. It's Budweiser's Fantasy Play-by-Play. -play. 
just visit the fourth floor booth. Then you'll get your chance to call all the slams, jams, and blocks, just like the pros. Do it with a friend and have twice the fun. Afterward, you'll receive a videotape of yourself calling all the NBA action for you to enjoy again and again. Budweiser Fantasy Play-By-Play, -play, brought to you by Channel 31. Yeah, we're out of the long faces, fellas. We got a test tomorrow. We're gonna flunk out of school. That's it? Relax. It's not the end of the world. It's not? Oh, no. Could be the best thing that ever happened to you. I used to pay $2,000 a year to come to this school way back when. Then I flunked out. Now they pay me $2,000 a year to come here. Who do you think got the last laugh there? Chuck's time to shine. <laughs> hey, little brother. There's no food at my place. Can I borrow your meal card? I already used mine tonight. Take Joe's. Ah! What are you doing here? I thought I killed you. Hmm, that's Joe's medical skeleton. Sanford calls it Mr. Boner. And then he says, get it. You get it? Oh, I see. So, how's college treating you? Uh, it's harder than I thought. I wouldn't worry. You gotta be a real dolt to flunk out of this school. Oh, God. We're screwed. I don't want to be a dolt. What are we gonna do? Uh, I guess we could try to read the chapters. You always want to take the easy way out, don't you? Lucky bums. Never have to take tests. What do they know about hardship? What are you doing? Look at those two dogs! Oh my god, look at that! <laughs> That's disgusting! <laughs> get a room! <laughs> this should get a room! Uh, dear god, I know I don't deserve your help, but if you could possibly find some way for me to cheat on that test tomorrow, I'll forget about that ten dollars you owe me. <sighs> Del. I just happened to be outside your window the last 72 hours and thought I'd stop by. Is that biology? Um, yeah. I have a test. So, uh, I should probably get back to studying. I aced AP Biology last year. I could help you. Really? You could come over, and I'll tutor you in my room while we sit on my bed between my embroidered Dell pillows and look at my computer program that morphs our images and shows what our child would look like. I've already named him Delicity or Fell, whichever you like. Um, on second thought, I better just start to close this door as you struggle to keep it open. You think I'm fat, don't you? <laughs> I vomited three times for you today, you know that? Uh. All right, let's hand them in so I can get home to my owls. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're on a roll, son. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, there's a right answer. Almost forgot. They roll out the welcome mat for you, and the next thing you know, it's good riddance. And after we spent so much time building that loft... Ah, uh, what's the use? I don't belong here. I don't belong anywhere. I might as well just run off and join the Olympics. I can't seem to do anything right. Uh, those are Joe's clothes. 
Uh, that was the window. Say, how'd you fellas do on that test? Uh. Bad, huh? Join the club. I think I got the lowest score in the class. Want a bet? What'd you get? Oh, hell, a 42? At least you passed. I got a 15! What do you mean, passed? Our biology professor grades on a curve. He explained it on the first day. Weren't you there? We can't be everywhere at once. The lowest grade in the class gets the F. You guys got at least a D. D? Do you know what that means? Yeah, really big boobs. Dude, your mom has D's. And they're sweet. You know what else it means? We passed. What are my clothes doing down on the... What the... Don't you know that thing costs over $2,000? That thing has a name. Mr. Boner. Get it? This is college. They don't tolerate brain-dead morons like you at this level of education. <laughs> I think they do. Friday already?
If you've always wanted to be a sports announcer, now's your chance. It's Budweiser's Fantasy Play-By-Play. -play. Just visit the fourth floor booth. Then you'll get your chance to call all the slams, jams, and blocks, just like the pros. Do it with a friend and have twice the fun. Afterward, you'll receive a videotape of yourself calling all the NBA action for you to enjoy again and again. Budweiser Fantasy Play-By-Play, -play, brought to you by Channel 31. At the IHOP Egg Ranch, we've learned you need a large variety of chickens to make a large variety of omelets. Now take Diva. Found her in the South Pacific. She lays our seafood omelets. Found Bunny in Aspen. Her specialty is Denver omelets. And Carmen, she... Well, you get the idea. We have lots more chickens and lots more omelets and... Oops. We make scrambled eggs, too. For a limited time, all our omelets are on sale Monday through Friday for only $4.49. Must be something left over from last year's show. Oh, I think I hear somebody coming. I better disappear. Hello, my name's Joe. Joe Normal. I'm just an average kid from a regular all-American family. <laughs> well, here we are, 8, 8 a.m. breakfast time in the normal household. <laughs> my mother is preparing me an average early morning snack. Toast, cereal, juice perhaps. Um... Mm, looks uh, normal, Mother. Uh, what is it? <laughs> My mother is a warm, caring person, but she drinks a little too much coffee. Also, she has sinus problems. It's quite normal for someone her age. She's been taking night classes in Japanese so she can communicate with father a little better. Um, my father is a, an accountant. He has a normal, respectable job, works an eight-hour day, and, and pays his taxes on time. I think I can hear him getting ready for work right now, actually. I have a dog. His name's Monsieur Berfletet. It's French. It means Mr. Beefhead. I didn't name him that. I wanted to call him Spot. Hey, Spot! Come here, Spot! Spot! Monkey in the middle of the metal detector. Hat of the cousin of the tax collector. Sensors in the president's skull. Do you have yesterday's time?
this new pit bull terrier. Things better than a credit card. Went to the gas station the other day. Got a couple gallons of gas, some oil, spark plug, six pack. Man says that'll be 1541. I, I, I say, damn, I forgot my wallet, but I did bring my credit card. What up, dog? Sounds, Sounds like, like a, a crazy, crazy animal. animal. Stings me in what? I'm a bug! Shopper! Yeah! Break, break, get me in this big bug, which 20? My post 13. I need more, you're right on top of you, good buddy, come back. Put some more meat on the grill! Looks abnormal! Hello, and welcome to Dr. Zoom Explores and Explains the Forbidden Secrets of the Unknown and the Forbidden. Yes, I am indeed your host and guide, Dr. Zoom. And this evening, a special treat. We are visiting behind the scenes at the legendary restaurant in Paris that serves human flesh. Here in the main dining room, well-heeled patrons looking for the ultimate in forbidden cuisine. What's forbidden about that cuisine, you ask? Well, let's see what's cooking in the kitchen. Ah, this criminal-looking fellow is our head chef, and here's someone's head. And this is a giant meat grinder, and this is, let's see, boiling baby soup. Ah, here's the cannibal cookbook with alphabetical recipes, and these unfortunates in this cage are awaiting their very own dinner party. Out you go, fellows. Take this cleaver and give the chef a taste of his own. Ah, sacre bleu, such a fricassee. Ah, time's up. Too bad. Adieu and bon appetit. Till next time, remember to always expose, explore, and explain that which is forbidden. <laughs> so depressed. I just got laid off from my job as building inspector. Why are you so sad? I'm unemployed. I just lost my job. I can't believe they did this to you. Oh, those jerks. I'll take care of them. Oh, how could you do this to Nardo? Oh, it wasn't my fault. Ah! Come on, Thomas. Let's get out of here. These people are worthless. Now I'm hungry. Me too. Let's get pizza. But we have no money. That's okay. We can go to Pizza Face Pizza. My friend Tony works there. He said I could get free pizza whenever I want. Let's go. Where is this place anyway? We've been walking for miles. It's on the other side of town. We'll be there in about an hour. An hour? I'm very tired. Let's sleep on the street for a while. Okay, but I'm so hungry, I'm not sure I can fall asleep. Come on, get out of here. You're blocking up the sidewalk. He wasn't very nice. Here's the place. My friend Tony works here. I'll wait out here. I'm too big to enter. Nardo, my good friend, how are you? Have some pizza. Goodbye, my good friend. Please come by and see me again. Thanks, Tony. Look at all that pizza. Let's eat. Ah, it's covered with bugs. <laughs> What's wrong, little egg? My parents went away and left me all alone. Now I'm hungry and scared, but there's no one to take care of me. 
Don't worry. I'll take care of you from now on. You're holding me too tight. But I'm just protecting you like you wanted. Yeah, I have to be careful. I'm fragile and I may break. Do you want me to take care of you or not? Yes. Then stop complaining. Questions? Your place or mine? Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. We'll close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, conjure up the blood. Then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let it pry through the portage of the head like the brass cannon. Let the brow overwhelm it. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide. Hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. Cry God for Harry, England, and St. George. Okay. Hey, Joe, you've got 60 seconds till lunchtime. Let's keep everything normal, okay? Okay. It's the neighbors. It's the neighbors. It's not me. It's the neighbors. Shut up! Shut up! Five, four... Three, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, I'm normal, I'm normal! <laughs> Look upon this face before I dispose of you forever. When we last left the specialist, they had tried to sneak their way out of the antimatter world. But did it work? Oh, what happened to Dr. Dendrite? Look! Well, it looks like they made it back all right. But judging from that house, there were some side effects. You've won this time, Mastermind, but you have not heard the last of me. I'll get you. Either me or my lawyers will get you. The world shall hear from Dendrite. If only his brain could be used for goodness. Yeah. So what's our next move, fearless leader? Let's deposit Guan Fulun's check. What's the hell? Do you have two pieces of identification? That's, That's him, him, all right. right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nobody move. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am called Megator, and this is a robbery. <laughs> Get a load of the fruitcake. He isn't even armed. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. I wouldn't do that if I were you, sir. You're not a very good shot, you know. You might hit an innocent bystander. Or <laughs> worse, shoot yourself in the foot, right? <laughs> am I right, ladies and gentlemen? You're right. <laughs> oh, nice haircut. I see your wife got a new pot. Really, what a lovely dress. What, the Salvation Army have a sale? <laughs> oh, how quaint. Now, which one of you is Curly, and which one's Mo? <laughs> We've got to do something. We're not good enough. Yeah, we can't even find a lost dog. Meanwhile, a silent alarm quickly brings a police SWAT team. This is the police. You're surrounded. Come out now, and we'll only beat you up a little bit. I'm embarrassed my taxes pay your salaries. <laughs> What's the matter with you? He's only one man. Somebody give me a gun. 
how many times have you been passed over for promotion? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can stop me. I shall roll the world. Thank you, thank you. Good night. This is unbelievable. Can anything stop this vicious madman? Aren't you going to tell the folks not to miss the next real packed episode of The Specialist? <sighs> What's the point? Just get out. Son of a pizza crap. MTV suck at the yucky. Get out of here. Bah! I don't know. Do you want to meet someone new and exciting? Someone who wants to hear all about you? Why don't you pick up the phone and give us a call? Dial 1-900-535-0. Oh. 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 Hurry. We're waiting. Interesting women who want to meet you. If you're 18 or older, you can meet someone new for only $2.99 per minute. Call now. You know you're very special to me. Now let me start again. We've been going together for almost two years now, right? One year, 10 months, 21 days, right? <laughs> Why don't I just say it? Will you marry me? You want to think about it? At Easter Seals, we believe it's what you say, not how you say it. You will? Really? Really? Support Easter Seals. snowy morning it is. We have the following bulletin. All local schools are closed today. to watch for cars. Billy signals, all clear. Hey, hey, I watch it. Oh, 
is it? You know, stop for that. Hey, no. No. Hey, no. Oh, oh. Hey, who is this? Nauseating next door neighbors. Last time, while washing dishes at Podunk's diner... Come on, you guys, leave me alone. You're not very funny. Dog Boy took a trip down memory lane. It seems like he's always looking for love in all the wrong places. Maybe this time, love has come looking for him. I'll talk to you later, Dog Boy. Dingle Dog Food is the best. More byproducts than all the rest. Hi, handsome. What was that cute little song you were singing? Oh, I don't remember. Well, I hope you remember you promised to take me on a date. I did? That's right, big boy. Don't tell me you're going to be too busy burying bones. I'll show you a better way to spend all that pent-up animal energy. Club Robo, 8 o'clock. We'll have a few drinks and see what happens. Oh, sounds neat. Neat? Oh, right. I'll see you later, you... you big hot dog. Bye, Rondy. Mm, good. Hey, I'm really getting behind on those bones. Oh, good. Still got plenty of time. Uh, there he goes again. I'm telling you, Helen, that guy is a ding-dang psycho or something. Please, don't use coarse language, dear. I really don't care for it. I'm sorry, Helen, but just listen to him. He sounds like a crazy animal. Like a wild beast. They're all animals out there, dear. Every last one of them. All except the few of us who've chosen to walk down the golden oh, yes. path to righteousness. Yes. Yes. Feel the touch of purity. The healing touch of Jerry. No the path pain. that Jerry has chosen for us. One mind, one body, no pleasure, <laughs> no pain. I'm not going to put up with that noise for one more second. Quiet down there, you heathen! Oh! You woke the baby up! Later, at Club Robo... Out. I'm as good as any of the dancers you see on Top 20 Robo Beat Countdown. Randy, watch this. I finally figured out how to do the funky Android Shuffle. Oh, there you are. Phew, just in time. These two monkeys were about to bore me to death. So, how about a drink, big fella? What are you having? A pink fuzzy. Mmm, a fuzzy drink. Sounds good. Is this fruitcake bothering you, Randy? Because if he is, we're more than happy to stomp the holy hell out of him. Why don't you two Neanderthals just dry up and blow away? I'm with Dog Boy. He's my idea of a real man. Hey, are y'all ready for the real thing? I hope you are, because I know I'm ready. Ready to plug in. Let me hear you say beep. Let me hear you say beep. Will Doug Boy plug into the pulsating robotic rhythm at Club Robo, or does he have more animalistic activities in mind? Find out next time. See Rondi enhanced by the energetic antics of the automaton. There's something about this song. <laughs> Hear Dog Boy's impassioned plea. What I'd really like to do is... Be there. Well, here we are, another humdrum day is drawing to a close. My mother is cooking me my evening meal. My father is relaxing after a hard day's work. And my dog, Monsieur Burf Latet, is nuzzling affectionately against my leg. I think I could find a more normal family anywhere in the whole universe. You're a freak. 
You're a freak! Who said that? You're a freak! You're a freak! You're a freak! You're a freak! Shut up! 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 Hey! I'm going down to Mexico to start me your UFO religion! Toilet! Toilet! Now that we've seen the cutting edge of animation today, let's roll it back 25 years and sample some classic Japanese animation. Speed Racer's next, and I'll bet you didn't know he was that old.
Is it Friday already? Welcome to In Living Color. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here tonight. We got a fun show lined up. As usual, i like to introduce the crew. Starting with my DJ, SW1. And my ladies, starting over here with Carrie, Michelle, Deidre, Lisa, Carrie Ann. So with no more delay, SW1, do the right thing. The Foundation for Black History Awareness is pleased to sponsor Great American Profiles. Tonight, King, the Early Years. Even in his earliest school days, young King seemed destined to become a leader. Hey, 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 that's mine. So, wait a minute, why do you do that, boy? Because I wanted to, duty brain. You better shut up. Brothers, brothers, brothers! There's no way to settle things. There's nothing to be gained by fighting. Unless you get paid for it. Don, Don King, are you causing trouble again? No, Miss Patterson! And so, a young entrepreneur began what was to become his life's work, armed only with this one thought. I think I can make a buck doing this. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today at noon is going to be the biggest, most prodigious fight in all the school history. It's going to be punch time at night time. It's going to be a throwdown in the playground. It's going to be the rumble by the jungle gym. Give me money. Give me money. 
This same philosophy led King to become a great innovator. Well, I, I don't have any money. Well, I'm sorry, your yo-yo is not good enough. You're gonna have to watch on pay-per-view. What's that? You have to look through the hole in the fence. <laughs> be fighting him no more okay i don't either king also became a great motivator okay hit my hand harder that's the man May I walk, walk you home? Uh-uh. Why not? I just wanted to fight. But he got all the money. And a vocabulary. <laughs> I got a little present for you, young Miss Givens. Oh, thank you. A man of vision, a man of integrity, a man with a decent haircut. He was none of these things. But he got all the money. Only in America. Only in America. This has been Great American Profiles. Now, wait a minute, y'all. This ain't show just for anybody. We got some funky, fresh meat loaf happening. All you sexy fly chefs, come on, let's cook. Ah, uh, cook it. Yankee man's bag. Plus, me have four perfectly good jobs left. Full job? Let me tell you something, young Rasta boy. When I was your age, I was a maintenance man, a carpenter, a cab driver, a cook, a hospital orderly, a security guard, a tour guide, a fish cleaner, and an Amway distributor all in the same day. I didn't even have time to almost make you, boy. But, pop, me in tin bands now. We don't have even a little bit of time for myself now. Tin ban and full job. 
That's 14 tings. <laughs> They're not as bad as I thought, boy. Come here, you chip off the old banana boat. Me proud of you, boy. <laughs> you hear that, you lazy layabouts? My boy got 14 jobs. Come on. Come on. Well, 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 if it ain't table napkin turn table cloth. <laughs> what you doing home right now? Daddy, leave me alone. I have a date with my new boyfriend. What? Really now? Tell us about this new fella. Well, him name is Danny. Him American, him very funny, and I think I love he. <laughs> and what else? What do Daddy want to hear? Well, him very successful, you know. Him make over $100,000 a year. Mama gonna be rich. $100,000? How many jobs he got to make $100,000? Only one? He's a doctor. One job! <laughs> one job! The girl the boy with one job! I hear it. That's all you ever talk about. Work, work, work. What about love? Look at the two of you. You're tired and you're bogged out all the time. Why don't you go and take a vacation? Oh, me on vacation now from 13 jobs. But, Papa, how can I think about working when I am in love? It's just like when you and Mama just met, remember? I never love your mother. <laughs> I marry your mother because she had six jobs. What happened to that nice Korean boy you was dating? He had a hundred jobs. <laughs> Him dead now. Him job dead at a job interview. <laughs> hey, that means one hundred job opening. A hundred job opening? Someone get my newspaper, don't <laughs> say Tell you stupid people anything. I'm in love and that's the most important thing. You're supposed to be on my side anyway. Hey, and we shut up in there. This ain't your case. Shut the hell up in there. Hey, man. Don't nobody tell God for him to be quiet in your own house. If I didn't have to go to work, if I had a time, I'd come whoop your ass right now. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Look at the time. Oh, hey, man. Join us again soon for Hey Man with the Headleys. You can't tell if they're happy or mad. <laughs> they're just working. Intro. Cue up the searchlight, promise to the center stage I grab the first mic Projecting the voice with this mic and I'm coughing You ain't my knuckle, suck I'm snuffing The word of the third stands true so no Let her get piano. Bring the fantasy home. Now you can enjoy the elegance of a baby grand piano in your home for under $99 per month or a console from just $59 per month. Visit Burgett Piano for the finest quality at the most affordable price. You're watching KRBK TV, Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto. Mr. Belvedere's having a party, and everyone's invited. You never told me you were having a party. That's right, a party. There'll be food. Mr. Belvedere's prepared you a little snack. There'll be music. I got you, babe. And romance. So race on home, pull up a chair, and party with Mr. Belvedere. It'll be fun. Mr. Belvedere, weekdays at 530. <laughs> The International House of Pancakes announces two delicious deep sea dinner deals. Your choice of our 21 shrimp dinner with 21 succulent shrimp or our fish and shrimp dinner. Tender filet of fish and luscious shrimp. Two shrimp dinners worth going off the deep end for. Now at International House of Pancakes. Deep sea dinner, only $4.99 at your IHOP now. Scarlet. Oh. Hello. I'm Ted Turner, and welcome to Ted Turner's Colorized Classics. 
Mm-hmm. Now, the colorization of these films may not agree with some people's artistic <laughs> sensibilities. <laughs> but they're mine. And I can do anything I want with them. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Hell, I just found a way to add even more color. As you'll see in tonight's film, Casablanca. <laughs> Of all the job joints in the world, she had to bring a big butt into mine. <laughs> I really loved her, you know. And why not? She's the only woman I ever met that looked as good as me. <laughs> He's looking at you, my darling. Yo, Stevie, play it again. <laughs> you must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sign is just a sign. That's all the time we have tonight. Join us next time for Citizen Kane starring Jimmy Walker. I think you'll agree. It's dynamite. I'm lucky enough to be Ted Turner. Good night. So look here, man. The Mercedes has to be back by midnight. So what are we going to do? I don't know, man. I passed out all the fake business cards. We'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. But yo, man, I ain't taking a friend. Well, that's the way it's gotta be. You know I'm the one who always makes the first move, so you get stuck with the leftovers. Not this time, man. Why not? Yo, that girl ugly, man. <laughs> that's the best kind. What? I said the ugly one's the best kind, man. They don't ask for much. All you need is teeth and hair. That's all they want. <laughs> if right, and if they leave you, you ain't pressed. You ain't thinking nothing about them, you know? Right. It's a pretty girl, see? They want all your money. That's right. Just like them boys say. Never trust a big butt when they smile. That's right. I'm trying to give you poison. What you know about women, man? Shoot, I've been married seven times, son. Let me tell you. That's right. All of them ugly. That's right. One of them so ugly, I took it down to Wax Museum of Horror. Man said, please don't let her move. We can raise you inventory. <laughs> Hey, old man, you know a nice place around here where we can get something to eat? Your daddy's old. Better watch it now. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, sir. Where can we find a nice place to eat around here? Well, you know, that depends on what you're in the mood for. Now, if you want Chinese food, I guess the best place to go is down to Chin Wang's on the corner of Jefferson Central. <laughs> it's pretty good Chinese food, but I don't trust them, you know? They open 24 hours, man. Never take out no garbage. <laughs> you know? Not somewhere going to be open. 24 hours and never take out no garbage. Something ain't right. All right, man, we take the freaks to get some Chinese food, man. That ain't the move. It's bad. Don't take your girl on the first date to get Chinese food, man. That MSG will give a gas. <laughs> what about some chicken? Oh, shuck, you said the magic word now. You talking about the yard huh? Oh, I know about chicken. Right, I know about some chicken. That's right. Mm-hmm. You can't get no chicken this time of night, though. Watch out from the door, son. Why? Look, you better move right about now. What? <laughs> Happens every time they play Millie Vanilla. Vanilla. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. I'll be your buddy when you put something in the can, son. Hey, buddy, how you doing? <laughs> hey, tell your friend I said go to hell. <laughs> you ain't gonna wash your hands? Never mind. Miles around to check out the sound. Watch 
the walls come tumbling down. Kid and plays the perfect team. Now it's time to let off some steam. Don't be bashful now. Don't be shy. This ain't no time for you to wonder why. If you're not on the floor with someone else, don't blame us, blame yourself. What about And now, Public Access Television presents Men on Books. Hello, I'm Blaine Edwards. And I'm Antoine Merriweather. And welcome, welcome to, to Men, Men on Books. Books. The show that looks at great literature from the past and present. From a male point of view. <laughs> Tonight we have a new sponsor. Yes, and I'm Tickled Pink. <laughs> is brought to you by Wang. Don't they make computers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our first classic is a book called Robinson Crusoe. It's all about a story of a white man who suddenly finds himself stranded on a desert island and how he forms a beautiful friendship with a virile yet submissive black man. <laughs> the author is Daniel Defoe. Now, if he's anything like that cute little Willem Dafoe, I'll be his Friday, Saturday answer. Yeah, yeah. Our next book is Little Women. Hated it. <laughs> then, of course, there's Little Men. Hated it. <laughs> then we have Roughing it. It's a happy tale. <laughs> yes, it, this is a story about men romping through the wilderness at a time when our country was still open to exploration. It was written by Samuel Longhorn Clemens, known to most people as Mark Twain. You know, if I ever had a son, I'd love to name him Longhorn. If you ever have a son, I'd grow all my hair back. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you gonna make me read you on public access. Don't get mad. Look, I know who I am. Do you? Come on, show me them little pearlies. Now, that's the twan I know. Now we're coming to the last book, which is truly my... Personal favorite. This one's called Moby Dick. <laughs> Open the portholes, there's a man overboard. <laughs> I get goose pimply just thinking about that big Mr. Moby. <laughs> uh, red light. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Moby is a whale. I bet he is. <laughs> This book gets the yet unheard of Zorro snap in Z formation. You know, I really got wrapped up in this story of men out on the open sea, danger lurking around every corner, and them all snuggle up in them tiny little cabins. Just made me want to hoist my sail and shove off with them. Me too. I paid top dollar just to be a stowaway in that store. <laughs> oh, ditto. Well, that's our show for tonight. Yes, join us next time when we'll be reviewing some of Dickens. <laughs> yes, we'll be talking about the classic A Tale of Two Cities. I hope one of them is San Francisco. <laughs>
never spit that Wonder why my shit Me and my conglomerate Shall remain anonymous Caught up in the finest shit Live out my dreams Until my heart get fouled And what we crave You know exactly what this shit's about Fuck y'all mean Handling it since a teen I dish out Like the point guard of your favorite team Without doubt My life ain't rosy But I roll with it My mind was fine Till the dough hit it And told me that the mo did it And now it's kosher shit It's so acidic I blow a digit on the diamond In the minute But no bitches Watch how I'm walking Cause even the thoroughest niggas be knocking Trying to strike a bargain Hoping that they might get pardoned Shit I'm in Broadway Got me pins and needles And my cerebral beast The wicked is evil Thoughts that the sport to feed you Be facts In the game so deep Things can catch a Freeze off my kneecap Can y'all believe that Got the city drinking Chris Styles We up the feet Rappers going broke Trying to keep up with me My rise to riches Surprise the bitches Think harder You know this nigga Jay-Z Sean Carter G.S. the fuck up G.S. the fuck up Watch me shine like a bright let me get the fuck up All rhymers forget it Like Alzheimer's Small timers I said it I'm addressing all I'm drama Talk to me I'm out So sick of niggas I want money like Cosby Who would This is kind of talk That make me think You probably ain't got no putting Niggas got them kind of dreams from jail You in the streets nigga Make your moves Get your mail Niggas are coasting the SL But can't post bail Niggas are roast the L But scared to throw your toast Well I'm here to tell niggas It ain't all swell It's heaven Then it's hell niggas One day you're cruising And you're seven Next day you're sweating Forgetting your lies Alibis ain't matching up Bullshit catching up Here with the weak gold they repo your vehicle Everything was all good just a week ago About to start bitching, ain't you? Ready to start snitching, ain't you? I forgive your weak ass, hustling just ain't you Aside from the fast cars Honeys that shake they ass and bars You know you wouldn't be involved with the underworld dealers Carriers of Mac Millers East Coast bodyers, West Coast cat pillars Little monkey niggas turn gorillas Trapped in the station, filled up on octane And now they're not sane and not playing That goes without saying Slaying day in and day out with money playing Then they play you out Trying to escape my own mind Lurking the enemy Representing infinity with presidencies You know Alright now, fitting that we all playing games here Being that we all players, you know Monopoly is the perfect game for us, you know Right. You know somebody land on your property, they gotta pay, you know what I'm saying? But you know what we gonna do, man? We gonna stop this game, man. We gonna play for real, man. Let's, let's get it on, man. Now let's lock this all down. I like the name talking. He's talking something. Let's get it out of here. 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 Let's get it out that's that California? Oh, a lot of money, yeah. I'm gonna take all of it. You go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Friday already?
Whoa! Hello! Look at her! Look at that oh, one! Hello! Hello, Hello miss! Hello, miss! Hi there! Hello, miss! Excuse Hi me! Hi there! Miss. How you doing? I have doing? a minute of your time, How miss! How you doing? Hello, <laughs> miss! I wouldn't throw her out of bed for, uh, aging. No, sir. I guess not. You know what I'd like to do to her, guys? What? What? Take her out to a little black and white foreign film. The kind with subtitles? We oui, monsieur. <laughs> then afterwards, I drive her home. All the way, if you know what I mean. I think I do. And I wouldn't leave her house until... Until what? Until... Until I saw her safely to her door. Mm. Ooh, uh, killer fish! Love monkey, yeah! Hey, you guys know what I like to do? What? What, what do you like? I like to find a girl. Whoa! <laughs> oh, a woman. <laughs> Who's, uh, still having problems with her ex boyfriend? <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> and then we, uh, work them out together. Ooh, the two of you? Alone. In a bistro? He was a bastard to you. <laughs> more coffee, more coffee, more coffee. Hey, 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 hey. I'd like to meet her parents. Yeah. I wouldn't throw her out of bed for aging. No way. And uh, feeling insecure about it? All right. Yeah. Do you know what I like? You know what I like? What do you, what do you like, like, man? I like to meet a girl. Whoa. Whoa. Go, oh, woman. <laughs> Get her back to my place. Get her on the bed, under the covers. Then have her read all the poems she's ever written. Oh, yeah. Dim the lights and break out the haikus. <laughs> Make it rhyme, sister. Make it rhyme. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Mm. You guys know that. New receptionist who works out front? Oh, yeah, yeah. Woman like that, make you forget about Hiroshima. <laughs> you know what I like to do to her, guys? What? Date her for about three years till we became, I don't know, soulmates. Uh -huh. <laughs> then when the moment was just right, I'd slip her old man the question, you know, ask for her hand. Yeah. <laughs> and once we were married in a perfect ceremony, I'd take her a little out of the way suburbs like uh, Brayside Estates. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the brochures. And with my bare hands, I'd build her a house. I'm talking furniture, a spice rack. Oh, uh, a garage. Sure, shut a garage. Up, shut up, shut up. What? The receptionist is my sister. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I, you know, I was just beacon off. Yeah, beacon about my sister. Yeah, well, it's not like you look alike or anything. Yeah, well, have you ever studied cheek structure? Maybe you notice these things. Yeah, but, but still, I, uh. I wouldn't throw her out of bed for aging. <laughs> and, uh, feeling insecure about it? Huh? I guess not. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's go back and kill some more cows. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. Don't panic. I mean, I'm only crushing your head. <laughs> oh, working stiff. Uh, say, boys, uh, how's it going down at the plant? And uh, how are those helmets doing? Not so good. No, I'm crushing your head. I crush your head. Crush, crush, crush. Hey, you know what you are? You're a yuppie. That's right. I just made that world up. It's my world. And I'm crushing your head, yuppie. Wish, wish. Where do you idiots come from to get your head so terribly crushed? Brian? 
You back in time for dinner? Mom, we just ate dinner. I don't mind. I'll put a plate in the oven. Mom, don't. We just ate. Brian, I don't mind. Gotta go, Mom. Well, don't blame me if it's all dried out. <laughs> Well, I must admit that I was completely floored when my middle son Brian dropped his bombshell on my husband Gordon and I the other night. We were sitting around the kitchen table having a lovely cup of coffee and uh, I just asked Brian whether or not he wanted some more sugar and why he wasn't married. <laughs> He looked at me for the longest time, and then he said, Mom, I want you to think of your very worst nightmare. So, of course, I imagined losing my family in a fire. Well, that wasn't good enough for him. He continued to stare at me in an almost, well, psychotic manner. And then he said, Mom, no, make it worse. So, of course, I imagined setting the fire that killed my family. So when Brian finally told Gordon and I that he was a whole, uh, a whole, that he was shy, <laughs> I was almost relieved. Better that than killing my family in a fire for no apparent reason. I suppose it's more difficult on the men, you know, because they wonder where they went wrong, question their own sexuality, their own manhood, blame themselves. Of course, Gordon has found a way to blame me. <laughs> he says that I smothered Brian with too much affection. Well, if too much love is a sin, then I guess I'm going to hell. <laughs> At least Brian will have some company there. I told Brian that I don't want him to change now that he's, uh, well, you know, in show business. Because <laughs> I don't know what I'd ever do if I came home and found him in a dress. There isn't enough volunteer work on earth to help a mother through that. <laughs> you know, it's just that, well, I, I just hope that he's practicing no sex. <laughs> like his father. <laughs> It's not that I'm judging Brian, I'm not. It's just that I didn't know any of, you know, them when I was growing up. I had a good Christian girlhood. I didn't even know Christ was a Jew until I was 21. <laughs> the most exotic people in our neighborhood was a Dutch family. My mother called them niggers. <laughs> I wonder what Gordon is thinking now. Is that you, Tilla? Yes, Brian. <laughs> Brian, I have an idea. Tonight, I dress you up like a woman, but I make love to you like a man. Excellent. Hey, I've got my dad's car. It's a Cordoba. Come on. Oh, I wish I drank. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I was one of those bingo women, you know? One of those bingo women with the bleach blonde hair, unfiltered cigarettes, hockey jacket, and a welfare scam. And all day long I'd play bingo. And I'd call it out too wherever I was, even when I wasn't playing. Bingo, I'd say. Bingo! Hello, Mrs. Morton. Bingo to you. It was a lovely sermon, Reverend Wilson. Bingo to you and your family. Bingo, bingo, bingo. I'd start to talk in a southern accent. They'd call me that crazy lady. The one with the bachelor, son. 
And the neighbors would throw rocks at me as I shuffled down the street in my filthy bathrobe, clutching coupons for crackers and soap and hacking up blood. Oh, Gordon would leave me for a younger woman or man. And I'd end up living in a shopping cart at the end of the block where the fields begin. I'd rub cherries on my lips and cheeks to feel pretty. And wear sausages in a link around my neck. On Saturday night, when my son Brian came to visit with his traveling companion. It's Gordon I worry about, though. He is upset with this thing. He's like a dog worrying a bone. Penny for your thoughts, dear. You know, Attila? Yes, Brian. <laughs> you remind me of my father. A wonderful evening. I had a lovely time. Good night. <laughs> so are you going to sleep with me or what? <laughs> no, I'm not going to sleep with you. I haven't thought about sleeping with you, actually. It's because I have a cabbage for a hat, isn't it? <laughs> um, no, I, I don't judge people on their race, creed, or color. Unless they have a cabbage for a hat, which I do. <laughs> Someone had to point it out to me. Which they are awful quick to on account of it's so freaky to them. Like at the restaurant. <laughs> well, um, you know, I don't think anyone would have noticed if you hadn't screamed, I bet we got such a shitty table because I have a cabbage for a head. So, uh, what's the word on that, uh, good night nookie? <laughs> I don't think so. I had a bad childhood. <laughs> Yeah, the other kids wouldn't let me join in all their playful games. Oh, that's terrible. My dad, the farmer, got drunk, tried to harvest my head. <laughs> Could be true. I'm so sorry. So how about it? The mummy and the daddy dance? <laughs> Look, I don't love you. I don't even like you, all right? Doesn't really matter. Look, if I slept with you, it would only be out of pity, okay? Hey, I'm the king of the mercy fire! I'm sorry. At least let me come in and water my head. Otherwise, I'll go bald. You can come in for five minutes, but that's it. I'm tired. Yeah, in and out real quick. Then no! <laughs> All right, one glass of water. Hey, listen, uh, if Mr. Baker's dough doesn't rise, don't blame me. Blame my cabbage head. <laughs> That's okay, what's wrong? Laurie threw me out! <laughs> oh, God. There's no warning, you know, nothing. We're just 
just sitting having dinner, talking about our day. That, that's horrible. I, I, I don't know what to say. She just gets up, starts throwing my stuff in the hallway. Oh, God. Oh, I must have retraced my steps a thousand times, you know? Just trying to figure out if it was something I did. But everything just seems so perfect. Right from our first date. <laughs> Order anything you'd like. I think I'm gonna have the duck. Waiter, is there anything you'd recommend? was the happiest time of my life. With the temperature dropping rapidly I'm gonna make some more coffee. Would you like some? No, thanks. Are you sure? It's no problem. Really? No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay if I sleep here tonight? Uh, no, that's a problem. See, I don't have a bed for well, you. Well, hey, doesn't this couch fall out? No, I don't think oh, so. I'm I just... sure it does. No, Come on, look. Oh. Yeah, it does. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Vexus. <laughs> Oh, what's wrong, crybaby? Why are you so sad? Has the world treated you so terribly badly? Let me wipe the tears from your face. Oops, pressed your head. So sue me. Wait, come back. Come on, there's no charge for a flat head. Hush, hush, hush. I was reading in the obituaries the other day, June. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And I see that Miss Ida Kincaid has passed away. Oh. Cancer. Sad. Sad. Cancer. Oh, oh sad. sad. Oh, cancer. Oh, cancer is sad. It's a very sad oh, thing. Cancer, you know, oh, dear. Cancer, mm -hmm. cancer, 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 oh. cancer. Oh, and my daughter, Janie. Oh, is Janie dead? <laughs> oh, no, she's getting married, dear. Oh, how wonderful for you. Oh, but you must be so... Mom. Oh, hi, son. Mm -hmm. Have you met my son, Rusty? No. He's just finished high school, but he mm -hmm. hasn't found a job yet. He doesn't know what direction he's going in, but I'm sure once he does, he'll go in that direction directly. Perhaps they... Mom! Some... Get off my back. Oh. <laughs> Was I in your back, son? Little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you met my friend, Mrs. Wilson? No. No, I haven't. Well, her daughter Janie is getting married. Do you know Janie? Uh -oh. No, I don't. But if she's anything like her mother, I'm sure she's quite ravishing. Oh. Mom, I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah. Oh, well then, I better get you something to well, well, let me help you in the kitchen there, Joe. No, 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 no. You stay here. Yes, you stay put. Now, Rusty, you make sure Mrs. Wilson doesn't get bored. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, where have you been hiding all these years? <laughs> oh, Rusty, I haven't exactly been hiding. I've been writing for the church newsletter for... 34 years. Wow. Oh. I think words are just so, so sensual. Oh. Are you a bit of a scribbler, dear? <laughs> yeah, I've got some poems on restlessness in my jean jacket. I'll read you about no. five. Oh, I'm sorry. I just never read a friend's work. <clears throat> so I'm a friend then, am I? Oh, I'm fond of the whole family, dear. It's not much of a family, is it? <laughs> just me and my mom. 
and I'm the black sheep. Does that scare you? No. I want you. Jim! I've got a fistful of finger sandwiches. Huh? <laughs> oh, so tell me, what you gonna do now that Janie is dead? Mom, I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? Oh, I bring sandwiches. I don't bring anything to drink. Uh, Where was my head? Uh, oh, I'll get you something. What would you like, son? Um, I'll have a root beer, Mom. And for you, dear. And for the lady, uh, Brandy Alexander. Brandy Alexander. <laughs> oh, my. What a lovely view of the construction your mother has across the street. My, the light really brings out the blue in your hair. It's just a rinse. It's hot in here, isn't it? I can't recall a hotter January. Here, let me help you with your sweater clip. Oops, the wind. Oh. I'm on fire. Let me run through your sprinkler. Stop it, Rusty, stop it! You don't want an old relic like me. You need a younger gal. I've dated younger women. Women 40, 50. They're children. It's you I want. Oh. I couldn't find any brandy anywhere for the life of me. But I did manage to find a tray of martinis in the crisper. <laughs> Mom, there's an off chance I might want to watch TV later. Oh, then I better go lead through the TV guide with a highlighter then. <laughs> oh, Rusty, how can it work? You have no job, no future. Sure, we might have to live in the garage for a while. <laughs> but that's okay. I got my own little fridge. Oh, they'd laugh us out of town. You're right. We'll have to run away together. My ankles would never make the trip. <laughs> I would carry you to the ends of the earth. Oh. Well, look who happened to drop by. I found her pacing on the porch. <laughs> Mrs. Beamish, don't you, Rusty? Hello, Barbara. Barbara? Helen. Rusty? Uh, I see you got the walker. Yes, thank you very much. I'm sorry about your hip. It was worth it. <laughs> well, Rusty, I guess you won't be running through my sprinkler anymore. Oh, the sprinkler. Oh, the water. Oh, the fire. Oh, my hip. Mom, you're looking sleepy. Am I? Yeah, your eyes are getting heavy. Are they real? <laughs> Let me explain. Some men search their whole life to find love, and I was lucky enough to find two women in one semester. Am I in heaven or am I in hell? Wake up, June, dear. I've got to go. Are you going? Yes, I must, oh, dear. Well, thanks for coming to Tina. You will come again tomorrow, won't you? Won't you? I'm not a plaything. I'm a senior. <laughs> You've got to learn the difference. Then teach me, teacher. Maybe. <laughs> What a lovely tea.
evening. My name is David Foley, and I am a man with an unusual power. A power that I myself little suspected I possessed. I chanced upon it quite by accident one summer while doing a little bit of volunteer dentistry for the river people of Botswana. I discovered that I had the ability to induce honesty in my fellow man. So now, for the scientists amongst you, a confession. Hi, Mark. Hi, Dave. What's up? What's up? Did something happen? Did something happen I should know about? Well, if it did, tell me. Dave, I didn't do anything. Dave, I didn't do anything. You're wasting your time. I didn't do anything, all right? Wait, you don't think I had anything to do with that bit of business up at the mine now, do you? Because I didn't. I was nowhere near the mine. I don't even know where that mine is, David. Ah, it's hot in here. Don't you find it hot in here, David? <laughs> now, David, you stop looking at me like that because I'm telling you honestly, I was nowhere near the mine. If you don't believe me, why don't you go ask Bobby Joe and Timmy Ray because I was with them all afternoon. We was playing card. Now, go on. Go on, ask them. They'll tell you I was nowhere near the mine, David. I swear to God, I didn't do anything. David, I swear to God, now you got to... All right, I did it! <laughs> I had to do it. I was being controlled. Being controlled by Mr. Vitalis. Come on out, Mr. Vitalis. Tell him what you made me do. Oh, well, Mr. Vitalis is shy. But that don't mean he ain't evil, David. I don't think you want to go messing with Mr. Vitalis. I had to do it. I'd do it again. Wasn't my choice. <laughs> well, come on, David. I told you I did it. I was being controlled, Dave. I did it. Can I go now? Can I? I did it. All right, I did it. Come on, believe. I did it. All right, I did it. I mean, all right, I didn't do it. I don't even know what the hell I'm confessing to. Thank you. Crushing your head. I, I beg I, your pardon. I'm just crushing the heads that need to get crushed, like yours, madam. My head is perfectly fine, thank you. No, it's not. It's shaped like an acorn. Can I flatten it for you? Wish, wish, wish. No. Come on. Take out your dentures. It'll be fun. I'll crush your head. Get out of the way, old lady. Your head's in serious Ooh. trouble. I'm crushing your head. No, I'm crushing your head. No, I'm crushing your head! How can you when yours is already flat? <laughs> Victory! Not a chance! Victory, I crushed your head! No, you didn't. My head is fine. I'm number one! I'm number one! No, you're number flat! I'm number one! I'm number one! What is getting crowded around here? Crush you! <laughs> This is my door here. Thank you for the lovely evening. I had a wonderful time. Well, this was our fifth date, and may I say it was magical? They've all been magical. The first day was the best, but they've been getting better. They're better than best. They're bester. <laughs> Why, thank you. I think I can honestly say that these evenings have all been magical for me as well. Really? I have something I'd like to ask you. Oh, I don't know. 
Maybe I don't have the right to ask. But then, should I live life as a coward? Live a living hell of unanswered questions? Or shall I rage forward into the still waters of my future, letting my wake ripple where it may? Perhaps tossing the metaphoric boats of less daring souls aside. Please, ask me. I don't know if I ask should. Ask me. I really ask. don't. Do you love me? <laughs> I love your joie de vivre. My joie de vivre. Your level-headedness and yet your quirky sense of fun. Then you love me. I love your righteous indignation, your moral outrage, and still, your compassion for the failings of others. So you love me. I love your hair. Oh, there are so many things about you that I love. But me, do you love me? No, I don't love you. <laughs> But you said you loved everything about me. I know, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> How could you love everything about me and not love me? Well, take the tree, for example. I can love the roots of the tree, each tangled, each elated fiber. And I can love the trunk of the tree and the bark that surrounds. And I can be enthralled by the branches, each bud, twig, and leaf, but put them all together and nothing. Icky, icky tree. I hate that tree. <laughs> and it's very much the same with you. <laughs> but I love all your component parts. Honestly, I do. Well, you love all my parts. You must like me an awful lot. No, that's the blank unholy irony of it. I don't even like you. <laughs> will you marry me? <laughs> no, I will not marry you. Whoosh, that's a relief. <laughs> well, I guess I'll pick you up Wednesday for the ballet, huh, darling? No, Owen, for I cannot see you anymore. But why? Because you don't like me. How can I see someone who doesn't even like me? <laughs> Gee, I guess I never really thought of it like that. <laughs> I guess my problem is I don't take the time to... Step back from things and see them for what they really are. Hmm. <laughs> oh, no! They say that the notion of love at first sight is an impossible idea. Now, I may have been born yesterday, but I still went shopping. It happens. Well, it happened to me. Oh, it was years ago when I was living in Baghdad. On the day in question, it was a sexy, sunny, rocky day. <laughs> and I was lounging about the pool at the Danish consulate, wearing next to nothing. <laughs> oh. In fact, at one point, all I was wearing was a diplomat's hand. <laughs> It was a crazy, crazy time for me. I was the top male model for an Egyptian line of jeans. <laughs> and my face and figure were plastered on billboards all over the Middle East. <laughs> and still the fighting continued. <laughs> the man came striding into the pool area like the Colossus of Rhodes and shot me a look of raw passion that heroes have been shooting at heroes for thousands and thousands of years. I froze. <laughs> 
and buried my face in a copy of Omar Khayyam's Kubla Khan. But it was upside down, so I feigned dyslexia. He saw right through my onion skin charade and dove into the pool fully clothed. And in one clean, swift movement, he was there beside me, a pepper mill looking for his salt cellar. Oh yes, Serge was black, which is odd, don't you think, him being Danish and all? But I figure if the French can worship Jerry Lewis and the Turks can invent the croissant, Anything's possible in this crazy, crazy world. I turned to Serge, and with the spontaneity of champagne and a slipper, I said, I need a lover. <laughs> and that was it. We were together for six months, which in heterosexual terms is three reincarnations with the same mate. <laughs> But Serge is dead to me now. They're all dead to me now. He walked out of my life and smack into the front of a bus. <laughs> all my lovers have been killed by buses. I really must get a place in the country. <laughs> oh well, live and learn. You know, it's hard for a faggot to take risks nowadays. But you've got to try. For example, you know that feeling you get when you don't know whether it's gonna be a shit or a fart, but you let her rip anyway? I hesitated to use that analogy to a heterosexual audience because whenever you mention anything remotely anal, they always rush out to vacuum their car. It all reminds me of something that Moliere once said to Guy de Maupassant in a cafe in Vienna. That's nice. You should write it down. When I first met Sportva, she was standing with her nose pressed up against the used bookstore window. Beneath her arm was some flowers. And oh yeah, she was naked. Well, she was more than naked. She was naked for Jesus. That night at Sportva's house, I undressed and we witnessed together. And the next morning when I looked up at the sky, or at least that part of her ceiling where I thought the sky might be, that's when I vowed to remain naked, naked for Jesus. Just last week I was driving along in my usual enlightened state when a peace officer pulled me over. He was going to arrest me, but when I explained to him of my newfound faith, he let me go. In fact, now, Officer Woodward walks his beat, naked, naked for Jesus. And we're not alone. I see a time coming when people from all walks of life rise up and strip down. I see doctors and lawyers, management trainees, pharmacists and socialists united. I see cowboys and Indians, and farmers, drifters, Whole choirs, all standing, naked, naked for Jesus. So when you go home tonight and undress, be it to shower or to sleep, take a look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I merely naked or am I...
the last time I saw him, we didn't even talk. We just watched the Flintstones. It's always that way. The last time you see someone, you just wish that you said more. Well, yeah, but it's not like you know it's going to be the last time, right? Yeah. I mean, if you knew it was going to be the last time, then... Well, you'd say something. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Stuff I remember about Reg is the little stuff. You know, like the way he'd always make sure you had a lift home. Oh, yeah. Even if you had your own car with you, he'd still insist on giving you a lift. <laughs> of course, the next day you'd have to go back for your car. <laughs> but he'd give you a lift then, too, if he could. Oh, sure, if he yeah. could. Yeah. To Reg. To Reg. To Reg. To Reg. God, he could skate. <laughs> I never saw a man more graceful and two blades in a sheet of ice. Yeah. Remember his hair? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was always perfect. Yet you never saw him with a comb. I can't believe he's dead. To Reg. To Reg. To Reg. Yeah. Gee, you know, guys? Seems like only yesterday we were just a bunch of kids hanging out and getting slurpees. Next thing you know, we all got jobs. Or girlfriends. Yeah. Next thing you know, they're moving in with you. Next thing you know, you're out buying piano wire. <laughs> Good, strong piano wire and sneaking up an old Reg while he reads. <laughs> jobs become careers. Girlfriends become wives. And Reg becomes a lifeless corpse in your arms. <laughs> it kind of makes you think about the fragility of human life. Nah, yeah, not really. Remember how he fought back? <laughs> yeah. 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 Death grip almost broke my wrist. <laughs> Easy to beat up, hard to kill. <laughs> to Reg! To Reg. <laughs> I wonder where he is now. What? Huh? In a shallow grave. <laughs> yeah, up by the tracks, don't you remember? Oh, no, 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 no. I know where his corpse is. I meant spiritually. I wonder where his soul is. Oh, yeah. You know, guys, I like to think that if there is a heaven, our buddy Reg is up there, helping folks out and Maybe even jamming with Jimmy. I didn't know Reg could play guitar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was yeah. great. <laughs> Just goes to show you. You can kill a guy, fold him up, stuff him in your trunk, and still, you don't really know him. <laughs> Although you get to know a guy pretty quick when you watch him beg for mercy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> to good friends, to good times, and to ritualistic murders. <laughs> to Reg! it I quit I'm retired I will crush no more heads I gotta talk about the planes in me this kind of rock this is not a massive rock what a head what a head oh he's gone what an opportunity missed me oh that was trophy material no I will crush your head my little cabbage friend but first I practice. I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing... You'll do. I'm crushing your head, Mr. Businessman. See that? Your head's flat. Is your mother still dressing you? She should have just crushed your head. Good night.
Well, everyone, that was our show for this week, tonight. But don't worry, we got another one coming next week. We're going to be bringing back last week's lineup. Oh, of course, next week we're bringing back Beavis and Butthead, Undergrad, Downtown, and Viva La Bam. I'm starting to get excited for those episodes because there's a couple of my favorite shows of all time. Back when I was watching them TV all the time, dude, Beavis and Butt Butthead, and then when Viva La Bam came out, I was hooked to Viva La Bam too. So I'm excited for these, these alternating weeks. I like this lineup as well. This is a good lineup, a good couple weeks of lineups that we've put together that I've put together. I have no turds in my pocket. It's just me on this show. I gotta remember that. But thanks for hanging out with us again. Make sure that you're... I did it again. I... Thanks for hanging out with me again. And make sure that you go hang out with us on the other shows on Max Out Showcase and on Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out. It's not like it's a secret. So you can go over there and watch that. You can come over here and watch that. These two can associate. It's okay to swear over here and to not swear over there. It's okay to separate these worlds because it's real. But thanks for hanging out over here. We will see you next time, next week, in the same place, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, p.m. to 10 p.m. right here on Friday Night Sucks. Is it Friday already? You're